Don't you think it would be awesome to remember every single thing? To never ever be able to forget anything? Well, you're wrong. And by the time I finish my story, you'll understand why. Before I go on, be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. If you do this in the next 5 seconds, make a wish. And I promise it will come true. Hit that notification bell too. Somehow, I was born with the extraordinary ability to remember everything. I could talk before I was a one-year-old. And at first, everyone was obsessed with me. My parents boasted to everyone who'd listen, and my two older sisters, Monique and Maribel, were always telling their friends about their awesome sister Maddie. Many kids start talking early. There's probably nothing special about her. My grandmother said to my mom one evening. This was apparently enough to convince her that I was ordinary. Then a burglar broke into our house. My sisters were at school, my dad was at work, and my mom was in the shower. I was in my crib poking the eyes of my favorite stuffed toy when I saw a tall man dressed in black towering over me. I didn't scream. I just pretended to be a dumb baby. He picked up his phone, and I heard him say, Yes, I'll be returning home when I'm done. Yes, 24 Park Lane, 5th floor, 2nd door. I'll have a big stash for us to sell soon. He made a goofy face at me, then went downstairs. I heard a few noises, and then the door slammed shut. My mom ran out of the shower when she heard the door and came straight to my room. Maddie, are you okay? I just heard the door. I wasn't expecting your father until later today. It wasn't dad. It was a man dressed in black. He made a funny face at me. My mom ran downstairs and screamed. Her television set was gone. She searched her room and all her jewelry was gone. He'd also stolen my father's safe. She called the police, who immediately came to our house. Tell them what he looked like, Maddie. He was tall, had blonde hair, black eyes, and a tattoo of a rabbit on his left cheek. She's just a toddler. She can't possibly remember that. This can't be accurate. One of the policemen said. No, wait. That sounds like the description of the serial burglar we've been after. She mentioned the tattoo. Another officer replied. I have his address too. He told someone on the phone he was going to 24 Park Lane, 5th floor, 2nd door. I said. My mom's eyes opened wide. You heard all that, sweetie? I guess it's worth a try. Let's see if we can catch this guy. A third policeman said. They left our house and my mom gave me a long hug and told me that she'd never leave me alone again when she went to shower. In about 30 minutes, there were news reporters at our house. They wanted to interview the parents of the toddler who helped to catch one of the worst burglars in our town. My parents were flattered and were happy that they could begin boasting about me again. It was confirmed that I was not normal. Two years later, I started preschool, but it was pretty boring because I knew everything they were teaching the other kids. Sometimes, when the teachers needed a break, they'd ask me to teach and go to sleep. I know it sounds really funny, but this really happened. A year later in kindergarten, my new teacher told my parents I could skip to the sixth grade, but they decided that it might not be the best decision. Besides, what sixth grader would want to have a five-year-old friend? I'd be too lonely. I made a friend named Stephanie, and although I was way smarter than she was, we played together like normal kids. She had a fantastic dollhouse, and we'd play with it for hours. As I continued growing, my sisters Monique and Maribel began struggling in school. I saw Monique crying one night over a bowl of popcorn while staring at the blank television screen. What's wrong, Monique? I asked. I got a zero on my social studies quiz again! How come? You studied so hard the other night. Well, I didn't remember anything the next day. The teacher says if I don't pass the next one, I won't be able to go on the field trip with everyone else. She's so mean. Can I see the paper? She handed me the multiple choice quiz, and I instantly knew all the correct answers, although she was a few grades above me. But this is so easy, Monique. Here, I shaded the correct answers for you. Maybe the same questions will come on the next quiz. My sister smiled, but I could have sworn I saw her scorn as I left the room. The next week, she refused to speak to me, so I asked Maribel if something was wrong. She was really upset when you showed her the correct answers on her quiz. She thinks that you were showing off that you're a genius. Me? A genius? Of course! You get straight A's. Many people are jealous of you. They just don't say it. 
Heck, I'm jealous of you too sometimes. But I know it's not your fault. Let's just hope that Monique comes around. Years later, Monique was still barely speaking to me, but I was still friends with Stephanie. We ended up in all the same classes through elementary and middle school. Now we were going to the same high school, but it wasn't the same. She became very distracted by boys. She couldn't think straight around them, and she was obsessed with the idea of finding a boyfriend. She stopped studying, doing homework, or anything related to school. Steph, what are you doing with your life? You can't spend all your time obsessing over these guys. You've got to find a balance. I told her one day. She wasn't too happy about that and stopped talking to me for about a week. Then, on the morning of our biology test, she sent me a note. It read, Hey, can you pass me the answers? I didn't have any time to study. Just show me while the teacher's head is turned away. I gave her the answers that time because it had been a very lonely week. I had no one else to talk to. We both got 100% for that test, and she was very happy. We started hanging out again. But do you know what she did next? She tried to make it a habit. She'd constantly ask me for test and quiz answers, and sometimes she even expected me to do her homework. I did for a while, but eventually, I told her I couldn't do it anymore. I hated being a dishonest person, and giving her the answers wasn't really helping her. She didn't see it that way, and she made school a total nightmare for me. As I was walking through the hallway one morning, Kevin, a boy from my math class, said, Wow, Maddie, I didn't know you were capable of doing something so horrible. What do you mean? I asked. You stole Stephanie's boyfriend. Isn't she your best friend? What? She said she caught you two kissing in the computer lab yesterday. That's ridiculous. She doesn't even have a... But he was gone before I could finish. That day, everyone was pointing fingers at me and calling me Boy Snatcher. The next week, there was a new rumor. Stephanie had told everyone I stole $100 from her purse, which was also ridiculous because she never had that much money. She continued spreading rumors, and after a month, no one would talk to me. I was really sad, and I even considered asking my parents to just let me write the college entrance exams so I could leave high school. Monique still wasn't talking to me, so I decided to talk to Maribel about my situation over breakfast. Maybe something is wrong with her. Have you tried talking to her? She stopped talking to me completely, then started spreading these rumors. I sort of want to throw a bucket of paint in her face, but I also miss my friend. She's been my best friend since kindergarten. Well, maybe you should try to talk to her and find out exactly what's wrong. Then you can decide whether to end the friendship for good or to try to make it work. I took my sister's advice and walked over to Stephanie's house that night. When I got there, all of her lights were on and I could see her standing in her living room. It took me a while to notice the woman standing next to the window staring inside. I walked closer to the door and rang the bell while looking at her strangely. As soon as she noticed me, she ran away. What do you want? Stephanie said as she opened the door. Um, someone was just standing here looking through your window. Yes, you freak. Why are you at my house? I just want to talk. I don't understand how we were best friends, and now we're like, enemies. I don't understand what I did wrong, and why you're treating me like this. It's because you're a nerd and a loser. You think you're better than everyone because you've got a perfect memory. Well, that's all you have. You're not beautiful and you'll never get as many boys as me. <laughs> Good luck making anything out of yourself just for being smart. I'm sure you're perfect memory will pay off someday. Now go away, I've got better things to do. She then slammed the door in my face. I cried all the way home and when I got there, I was just plain angry. But my mood changed as soon as I walked into the living room. Whoa, look at this, Maddie, Maribel said. She was watching the news. A reporter was just explaining that a female prisoner had escaped and that she was very dangerous. Her picture showed up on the screen and I gasped. It was the same woman who was looking through Stephanie's window. Oh my god, I said. What? Maribel replied. Nothing. Nothing at all. I smiled and thought this should be exciting. I could call the police and try to protect Stephanie, but she was so mean to me, so why should I care? Instead, I decided to find out all I could about this woman and why she decided to show up at Stephanie's house. The next week, I searched online 
went to the library, and even to the police station to see if I could get her records. I tried my luck, and eventually, my hard work paid off. Her name was Kathy Young. She'd been arrested for gang-related activities, but the most interesting part of her story was that before she'd been arrested, she had given birth to a baby girl. I began to connect the dots. Stephanie looked nothing like her siblings or parents, but a whole lot like Kathy. I had to find out if my suspicions were correct. I found out more about Kathy's gang, and it reached the point where I could identify people who were part of it. I looked for them around town. I memorized their facial features and what they did with their entire day. Then I approached one of them one day. His name was Carl, and he worked at a nearby 7-Eleven. I need to talk to Kathy, I said. What are you talking about? I know you know where she is hiding. Listen, I'm not a cop or anything. It's about her daughter. Please trust me, I'm not dangerous. He hesitated for a few minutes, then finally said, Okay, come back here around 7. I'll take you there. That night, he was waiting for me outside. A black car pulled up and I got inside. They drove a few blocks away until we came to a house that wasn't the least bit suspicious. Kathy was waiting for us inside, looking very confused. You were the girl I saw the other night. Yes. Listen, I have something important to ask you. That girl you were looking at through the window, is she your daughter? Yes, that's Amber. How do you know? Who are you? Well, her new parents named her Stephanie. We used to be friends. What a stupid name. Why are you here? I'm not sure. Can you help me? With what? I want her back. I'm finally out of prison. And I've got to continue hiding because they're looking for me. I can fly safely to another country because I've got connections. But I don't want to leave without my daughter. Now, you're probably thinking that Stephanie, who really believed that the people she lived with were her biological parents, would hate flying away with a woman who was a stranger. We were best friends, and I knew that she'd hate that. But I felt like I hit the jackpot. After she was so mean to me, she deserved to be kidnapped by a stranger. And maybe if she was gone, the people at my school would stop being so mean to me. So I did it. I gave them Stephanie's entire schedule and a list of every single place she could possibly be after school and on weekends. Like she said, my perfect memory was going to pay off. It was about to ruin her life. By the next week, it was all over the news. Stephanie had vanished and there was absolutely no trace of her. Maybe I will hear from her again when we're much older. I don't really care at this point. I think she deserved it. I do feel sorry for her adoptive parents though, but they'll get over it, I'm sure.